And there was J. Marion Sims. I don't want to spend a lot of time with him. He's another figure. You can Google him. He's a, there's a statue, actually, of him in Central Park. And J. Marion Sims was an individual credited. He was a father of, of uh, modern gynecology. How many women in here know what a vaginal speculum is? And for those men in the room that we lost, <laughs> a vaginal speculum is a device designed to open up the vagina. It was considered uh, one of the most important advancements in medicine uh, that was made. He was credited as being the wealthiest man uh, to have, wealthiest physician to have ever lived. And what's interesting about him, you know, look at the medals pinned on him. I was just very curious about how it was uh, they regarded this man because no one ever really looked at how did he come up with that vaginal speculum. The way he did it was he, he actually uh, worked on unanesthetized, created, ex did experiments on unanesthetized slave women. He created a, a makeshift hospital in his backyard in the mid-1800s. He built the first vaginal speculum from a pewter spoon. And he reasoned that slave women were able to bear great pain meaning we don't need any anesthesia, because their race made them more durable and thus they were well suited for painful medical experimentation. We didn't even, you know, because we didn't feel like other women could feel. This man would cut into women, cut into them, and just said, well, since they're black, they don't really feel it. Unbelievable. And more importantly is what he did to infants, because not only did he experiment on women, he also experimented on infants. He said that black infants suffered from something he called trimus nascentium, which is now commonly referred to as neonatal tetanus. Neonatal tetanus originates in horse manure, which was a likely cause of the disease in slave infants. He, contrib he attributed it to the indecency and intellectual flaws of slave infants together with skull malformations at birth. Um, that is a shoemaker's awl, and that's an 1800s shoemaker's awl. He would stick that into the heads of brand new infants in an effort to realign their skulls based on the indecency and intellectual flaws of their parents to treat the malady. Of course, it was a 100% death rate, but that's what he would stick in the head of a baby at birth. And so these are things that are so horrific that you, you, you can't possibly wrap your head around it. And this man is, I mean, just Google him. And you think to myself, I think to myself, if I were up here in front of you right now, and this is going to become very important as you move, I move into the other slides. Um, if I stomped a puppy to death out here, up here, just a little puppy, and stomped it right here to death in front of you, most of you would need therapy. And I would be arrested probably faster than killing a black man for killing a puppy. How could you do that? Do you realize how much dissonance you have to remove in order to stick that into the brain of a child? More importantly, the child can no longer be human. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The reason why he could do it is they weren't human. They didn't even feel pain. That's what this man believed. Now, you may look at that and go, those are horrific things from the past. There is a book out right now, not table reading. It's called Medical Apartheid. This is written by Harriet Washington. It came out last year. This book chronicles the experimentation on black people up to contemporary day. See, we want to look at the Tuskegee experiments. We want to look at Sims and go, oh, that just still going on, implicated, Harvard, John Hopkins, because we weren't what? Human. 